This lesson is solving systems of equations with graphing. Um, we'll also do some systems of inequalities. Um, a lot of textbooks don't put those together in the same lesson, but I think they fit really well together because it's all graphing. Um, and we kind of already know how to do inequalities. We did those with the transformations with the different parent functions, and we've also did that um, with normal lines back in chapter two ago. So, first off, what is a system of equations? Um, a system of equations is when you have the same number of variables as you do equations. Um, so, so far we've had one equation with one variable, so we're doing things like 2x plus 5 is equal to 10. We have one equation, we have one variable, so we can solve for that. If we have one equation with two variables, 2x plus 3y is equal to 10, now you can't solve that. We don't know because there's many different answers that will work for that. You can think of a several different things you can put for x, several things you can put for y, and it will still give you 10. However, if I give you another equation with that, now all of a sudden we have two equations with two variables, um, so we can solve that. So as long as you have the same number of variables as you do equations, um, you can figure out what those all are. For the most part, what we're going to use is two equations with two variables. Eventually, we'll get into three equations with th three variables, um, but we won't go on any further than that. If you go on any further than that, um, you use what they call matrices, um, and you do that your calculator, and if you're interested in that, we can talk about that a little later. So, the next thing we'll talk about is a solution. A solution to a system is the ordered pair, and again, it's an ordered pair for our purposes because there's two. Um, when we have three equations with three variables, it'll be an ordered triple. Um, that make both of the equations true. Um, so again, you can think of things that will make one equation true. So this equation, you could have 2, 18 would work. 2 plus 18 is 20. We got a 12 and 8. 12 plus 8 is 20. 15 and 5. You can think of an infinite amount of numbers to plug into that. That'll make it true. This equation is the same way. You could have 10, 5, 6, 19, so on and so forth. There's an infinite amount of or ordered pairs you can plug in that'll make that true. The solution that we're looking for is there's only one that makes both of them true. Um, so for this one, 5 and 15 work for both of them. There's only one ordered pair that works for both of those. So there's only one solution that makes both of them true. That's the 5 and 15. And I feel like a lot of people um, don't talk about that and don't um, explicitly explain that. Um, and I think that hopefully helps a little bit. So moving on, there are three different ways to solve these types of systems, um, at least that we're going to do. I'm sure there's more out there, but these are the ways we're going to do it. You can solve by graphing, substitution, and elimination. Um, for any system, you can use any method. Uh, so you could use graphing, and the person right next to you could use substitution. The person behind you could use elimination. They'll all work. Um, you'll get the same answer for all of them. So, that said, I know some people are like, well, are you going to make me solve some of my substitution? Or if, you, um, if they're all the same, if you all get the same answer, why don't we just use elimination for all of them? Well, the reason is because some of them are a lot easier doing one specific method. Um, so, sometimes graphing is the easiest. Again, you can manipulate the equations and make it an elimination. You could totally do that. Um, but some lend themselves really well for graphing, some for substitution, and some for elimination. So, here are some ways you can look for the easiest method. So, graphing is always going to be the easiest one if both of them are in slope-intercept form, um, especially if the slopes are fractions. Um, so, if you have slopes being fractions, graphing is definitely going to be the easiest one. Now, I will be honest, we don't use graphing very often, but um, that is when it would be easiest. Substitution. If you have one equation that's solved for one of your variables, so if you have like x is equal to 3y plus 10, and then you have your other equation, that's when substitution is going to be the easiest. Then elimination is the easiest when they are both in standard form. So that's that AX plus BY is equal to C. Now again, um, there are other ways. It doesn't have to be in standard form to use elimination, but that's for our purposes. That's going to be what we want. Now I wanted to put this note on here. Obviously, not every system will fall nicely into these three categories. So you could have an equation or a system of equations that isn't in slope-intercept form, it's not in standard form for elimination, um, and one equation is not solved for substitution. So it doesn't fall nicely into any of these. Um, usually when that happens, we're going to try to manipulate things and to make it elimination. And that's the main reason is because most people, most of my Algebra 2 students, think elimination is the easiest. Um, 
However, that's not standard, that's not set in stone. Again, any of these methods you can solve any of the systems with. Um, that's how we do most of them. If it's not set up nicely in one of these three ways, we usually end up trying to make it into elimination. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's solve by graphing. So I made these three steps for this. Step one, get each equation in the slope intercept form. Um, if you want to use the x and y intercepts, technically you can use standard form. I just would not recommend that, and I don't prefer that method. But technically you could use it. Step two, then, you're going to graph, graph both lines. And then step three, the point where the lines intersect, where they cross, is your answer. Um, it's always going to be an ordered pair for our reasons. So number one, um, we're going to graph both of these. So the first one, we have a y-intercept of negative 4. Um, the slope is negative 4 over 3. So negative 4, 1, 2, 3 over 1. Sorry. Down 4 over 3. So down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. Now one thing I do with these a lot, if you want to use a ruler or your ID or credit card to make it very nice and straight and perfect, you can do it that way. Instead, I think it's just as easy, instead of doing that slope to get two points, I just keep doing that slope and get a bunch of points. So for instance, instead of down four over three to your right, I go up four, one, two, three, four, over one, two, three to the left, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then that is the line that I use. Then, actually let me make sure, that is this first one. Trying to color coordinate for you guys. Uh, the second one, the y-intercept is 6. That's right here. And it's up 1 over 3, so up 1 over 1, 2, 3. Now, again, if you just use a straight edge, hopefully you get the right answer. Um, but if you just connect it, it might not work very well. So that's why, again, my middle ground, instead of using a straight edge, I just keep using the slope to get more points. So instead of up and to the right, I go down 1 and 3 to the left. And if you keep doing that, you'll get the one where it works out nice and evenly. And it crosses right there. So that ordered pair is our answer. So we go over to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's negative 6 for your x. And then up, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 6, 4 is your ordered pair for that. So remember, what that also means, what we do later, is that is x is equal to negative 6 and y is equal to 4. That's what our answers will um, start looking like with substitution and elimination. Now, number two, I threw this in here to make sure we get a little bit more review with the x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 is this line. Crosses your x-axis right here at 3. And then my other line is negative 3 is down here. And then the slope is 2 over 3. So up 2 over 3 to your right. That already hits it really nice and easily. So we don't have to do a ton of points for this one. So that ordered pair right there is over 3, down 1. So again, that's x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 1, um, is what we'll get later. And this last one, my y-intercept is negative 5. Then it's up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Again, for me, I just do this a couple times because it's not really hard. You're just counting. 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1. And then my next one is positive 6. Oh, no. Oh, whew, that was close. So I almost graphed this. I almost fell for this trap. Um, the y-intercept is 6 and the slope is 2. I almost fell for that, but that's not in slope-intercept form. We have to divide that 3, and that's going to make your life way easier for this one. So I'm really glad I caught myself. We're going to all act like I did that on purpose, but we all know the truth. So the y-intercept is 2, and you go up 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. So what I already have right there is the intersection. And that is over 3, up 4, over 3, up 4. So again, per usual, um, go ahead and hit pause, do these on your own, and then hit play so you can see these. Um, again, if you notice, number 6 is not necessarily in slope-intercept form. Um, so make sure you're remembering to put it in slope-intercept form. Okay, so for number four, my y-intercept is one. I go up one over one, two, three, up one over one, two, three. Same thing, down one over three to the left, down one over three to the left. 
So we got this line. And my next one is negative 3. And it goes up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, 2, 3. So it's this one. So again, we already have the intersection right there. That intersection is over 3, up 2. This next one we have our y-intercept is 4. And I go up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. And again, down 2 over 1, 2, 3 to the left. Down 2 over 3 to the left. Again, I know it seems like overkill, but it's not that hard to go ahead and put some extra points there. And again, I'm trying to label these so it's easier to follow with my colors. Y is equal to 2. This is a horizontal line now, so it goes right here. Y-intercept is at 2. So this is your ordered pair. It looks like we go left 3 and then up 2. And the last one, make sure you're dividing everything by negative 2. You can't really see that. But that's y is equal to negative over negative is positive. So positive 1 half x minus 3. So minus 3 is right here. I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Down one over to the left, and again, once you start getting the rhythm, it's not really too bad, um, but that's going to help it a lot. Even if you use a straight edge, I think that method is a little bit more exact. But obviously, if you'd rather use a straight edge, I am not going to stop you from that. And this equation, 4, is your y-intercept. And I go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So obviously, this one's not going that way, so let's try the other way. So down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So there we go. And that, you probably heard it in my voice. I panicked a little bit, but I made a mistake. Um, but right there, it works out really nicely. Negative 2, negative 4. Go 2 to the left, then 4 down. So just like um, some of the other problems we've done, there are some special cases. Um, so when you solve these, there are three different outcomes you can get. You can either get one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions, or infinite solutions. Um, one solution is what we always get. So, so far, every single one of them we've done so far is one solution. And you can look up and you can see that one solution is negative 2, negative 4, negative 3, 2, 3, 2, so on and so forth. And if you look at those lines, they only intersect once. So it's only one solution. So this is the one we get all the time. That's very common. No solution is where the lines never intersect. Well, if the lines never intersect, that means they're parallel lines. Um, so, obviously, what we've learned before, parallel lines have the same slope, but it's important to remember for this one, it's different y-intercepts. Because if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, then they're the exact same line, which is the next one. So the next one, if you have two lines that are right on top of each other, a.k.a. they're the exact same line, so they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, that means there are infinitely many solutions. Now, I want to make sure you know the distinction. This is not all real numbers as the solution. There is a huge difference. Um, so basically what's going to happen with this, with the infinite many solutions, is you'll make one graph that will look like this. will be one line. Your next line will look like this. You'll graph that one. It's going to be the exact same line right on top of it. So any point that's right on this line will make it true, will be a solution. So there's infinite amount of points better solutions because all the points that are right on this line will work, but it's not all real numbers because this point still doesn't work. This point over here still doesn't work. This point doesn't work because those are not on the line. Those are not where the lines intersect. Um, so it's not all numbers. It's not that all numbers work. It's just that there's an infinite amount of numbers that work. If that's confusing at all, just try to remember if there's a system, you're going to use infinitely many solutions. If we're dealing with systems, you're looking for infinite. Just one of those things you can memorize and That'll work out. So let's look at these quickly. Um, oh, the, um, do these on your own. Again, I know I just taught this kind of new concept, but it's the same as before. You're just graphing these and looking. Do they cross once? Are they parallel? Or are they the same line? Um, so the first one, the line intercept is negative 6. We go up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, down 1 over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1 over 4. So we have this line is the first one. The next one, divide everything by 8. I get y is equal to 1 over 4x. 16 over 8 is 2, so this is 2. 
up one over four, up one over four, and you can see that those will never intersect because they have the same slope. So this is no solution because they're parallel. The next one, you can probably tell before we even start, they're different slopes, so they're obviously going to be one solution. This is what we have been doing. So positive three, and then up four over one, down one, two, three, four over one, one, two, three, four over one. And then the other one, the y-intercept is negative two. Then go down one over one, which is up one over one to the left. So they cross there at negative one, negative one. So that is one solution. Now again, we barely ever put one solution. Um, we always put the ordered pair, but there could be an instance where I say, how many solutions does this one have? And the next one, if you divide all these by negative two, I know I'm gonna make a mess of this, so I'm trying to do it small. We have y is equal to positive 2x minus 2. Well, again, already you can tell that they are the same exact line. Both of these are 2x minus 2. Um, so already we know it's infinitely many. And if you want to put infinitely solutions like this, I'm okay if you use that shortcut. Um, and if you don't graph it, that's fine. But it's not a bad idea to graph just to double check. So we go up 2 over 1. That's this one. And then the next one, same thing, up to over 1, so that's another one. And again, I know I didn't draw it perfectly, but they're the exact same line. They're right on top of each other. So essentially, this one is parallel. They never intersect. This one, they intersect once. And this one, they're kind of intersecting a thousand billion gazillion infinitely many times because they're the exact same line. Um, so just a quick note, we will revisit special cases in the next lesson with elimination and substitution. Um, they don't go away at all. Um, there's just different ways that those are going to look when you solve it with elimination and substitution. So last thing we're doing is inequalities. Um, so the biggest thing is you're going to shape, um, you're going to solve or graph both of these on one graph, and then where the overlap is is where your final answer. Now I always say that's the final shading um, because you're going to have shading for both of them. So I'm going to show you a little bit of tricks that I think are helpful. You can do it however you want. But I'm going to graph the first one. Say it's 2, and then I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Let's do a couple of those. And this is a solid line. Now one thing you can do is um, this says y is less than, and so we shade below that line. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of a better way, so if you don't want to shade that yet, I'm going to show you a little bit of a better way to do that to make it a little bit more clean, in my opinion. But you can do it that way, that's fine. So those are all the solutions for this red equation, the first one. And our next one, our y-intercept is negative 3. I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. That is a dotted line this time. And y is less than, so we shade below this. So the place that they overlap, so again, if you just look at the red one, um, all the solutions are below the red one, all the solutions to the blue one are to the left, and so the overall solution for both of them is where they both overlap, and that's all this area right here is where they overlap. Now, I don't care how you do this as long as I can tell where the final overlap is. So if you want to put a little arrow or if you make it super really dark, that's fine, whatever you want to do. But without fail, especially if you only use one color, I will have people that graph it this way. So the red one is below here, the blue one is over here, and I can't tell where the final overlap is. So this is how I do it to make it a little bit more clean. Instead of shading these, I just draw a little tiny um, kind of notes, I guess, to myself. Where um, So this red one, the first equation, if you're shading below that, I just draw these little arrows down from that one. So that's telling me I'm shading below. Then the blue one, the second one, I'm shading below that one, so I draw a couple little arrows like this. And now it's easier for me to look back and say, okay, so where's the overlap? It's below the red and below the blue, so the overlap is going to be right here. That's way easier for me to read. Now again, I don't care how you do it. Um, honestly, the reason I'm telling you that is to help you guys. I will look for whatever. But again, the punchline is if I can't tell where the overlap is, you're going to miss points on it. So make sure you're being careful with that. Um, this next one, again, they've got to be in slope-intercept form. So divide everything by negative 2. Now again, you divide it by a negative, so our rules never change for this. You have to flip your sign. So I have negative 2, and I have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, 2. Up, one, two, three, four, five, four, one, two. That is a solid line. 
And that one we're shading under that since we flipped the sign. So that's going to look like this. Then your red equation is positive 2. I go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Um, it's dotted, so it's going to look like this. Sorry, it's really hard to draw dotted with this touch screen. And we're shading below that one as well. So where do they overlap? Below both of them is going to be an overlap over here. Last but not least, x of negative 2 is a solid line right here at negative 2. Now, again, there's no above or below this one, but instead of above or below, you can think left and right. Um, and this is the only one you have that problem. Um, but if x is less than, you're shading the x's that are less than negative 2. x's that are less than negative 2 are to the left. And again, you can see in here, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. The next one we have is positive 2. Go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3. That's a dotted line. Oops. Sorry, this is zoomed in by accident. And that one is less than, so we're shading below. So where the arrows pointing at each other, to the left of the red, below the blue, is everything over here. Seems like all the ones we just did were less than, but that's okay. Again, We've done enough inequalities now that I think you get the picture on how to graph or how to shade. If not, you need to ask me. So again, do these on your own. Um, hit pause, do these on your own, then check your work. So I'm going to go through this a little bit more quickly. The first one is negative 2, then negative 1 over 1. This is a dotted line. And we're shading above this one. The next one is positive 2, and we're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. That is another dotted line. And we are shading below that one, so to the left of that for this one. So the overlap above the blue, below the red, the overlap is this little triangle. The next one are y intercepts of positive 2. We'll go down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. It's a solid line. And then the next one, y is equal to negative 2, is down here. Again, it's a solid line, and we're shading above that line. Whoops, I forgot the shading of the red one. That red one, the shading is below. So again, below the red, above the blue, the overlap is over here. And last but not least, for this first one, if I divide all of them by 3, sorry, I didn't have a lot of room, I should have made it bigger. Um, but that is y is greater than or equal to 2 over 3x plus 3. So y-intercept of 3, up 2 over 1, 2, 3. It's a solid line. Then the next one, divide everything by negative 3. So again, we're going to have to flip our sign. So y is greater than negative 4 over 3 minus 3. So minus 3 is here. And I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. Now, again, I would keep doing this up 4 over 3 to the other side. But really, you don't have to on this one because you're not looking for an exact point that they intersect. So that's where kind of these are a little bit nice. Now, again, I forgot to do the shading for both of these. So the red one, y is greater than, so that's above. The blue one, y is greater than, so that's above. So it's about both of them, so the overlap where all those arrows are pointing at each other up here. Now again, if you don't like that method with the little arrows, you can totally do it. I know some people that they will shade they will shade one of them like this one. They will use uh, sorry, they will use vertical lines for that blue one. And then for the next one, they will use horizontal lines. And so you can kind of see where they intersect because it's like a checkerboard. Um, and then they go through and they shade it in. Whatever you need to do. Again, I don't care what your graph looks like as long as I can tell where they overlap. Now, the next thing we're going to go over, and I'm gonna, not going to take a ton of time on this, um, but if they say, what ones are solutions? So there's two ways they can ask this. They can give you the two equations, and if you want to see what the solutions are, you have to sub it in and make sure it's true for both of them. Um, so if you sub, sub in your x and y for the first one, for 2, 5, we have 5 is greater than or equal to 1 half times 2 is 1 plus 1. Is 5 bigger than 2? Yep, so that one works. Um, oh, sorry. So that one works for the first one. But remember, it's got to work for both of them. So then side of the same thing. 5 is less than negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 4. 5 is less than negative 8. That's not true, so that doesn't work. 
So keep subbing your numbers in, and I would love to do all of them, but I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think you guys can do that. Just be careful and make sure you're paying attention to the inequality. Um, and it's got to be true for both of them. I almost fell victim to that. Now, the other way that I want to spend a little bit more time on, that's why I'm going a little bit quickly, is by using the graph. Now, again, if your ordered pair is where the overlap is, which hopefully you can see on this one, is this area over here, then it is a solution. So 2, 5 is over 1, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's up here. That is not where they overlap. And now you can see that's why it did work for the first one, because it's in the shaded part of the first line, but it's not the shaded part of the second line. So this one is not 1. The next one, negative 5, 0 is down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. Oh, sorry, negative 5, 0 is to the left. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. And I know it's kind of hard to see, especially on your paper. I apologize. I'll try to get a cleaner graph um, if I do one like this on a test or a quiz. Um, but that is a solution. That were to work for both of them because it's in the shaded part for both of them. It's where the overlap is. Um, negative 2, negative 5. So negative 2, negative 5 is down here. Again, that's not in the shaded part for both of them, just one of them. Negative 4, negative 4, so negative 4 up. So that's in the overlap area, so that works. Um, negative 4, negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1, so this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Oh, hold on. I didn't count that one right. Okay, sorry, rewind, rewind. This one, if you look, I counted over 5, so negative 4 should be right here. So negative 4, 4 is right here. Now this is right on the line. So if it's right on the line, we already talked about it. If it's in the overlapped area, it's a solution. If it's not in that overlapped area, it's not a solution. But what if it's right on the line? Well, if it's right on the line, it depends. If that line is dotted, then it's not a solution. Because then a dotted line, again, a dotted line um, means that it's not equal to. So if it's on that dotted line, it is equal to. So if it doesn't have the equal to sign, it's not one. Now again, if that's confusing, just remember, it's a dotted line, not the solution. However, negative uh, 4, 1 is right on the line, but it's right on a solid line, so that one is true, because it's going to be true for both of them, because again, now we have the equal to part with it. Now the one that's even worse, negative 2, 0, is right where they intersect. Now again, this is where it gets a little bit fuzzy, because you might say, well, it's right on a solid line. You're right, it is, but it's also right on a dotted line. If it's anywhere on a dotted line, it is not a solution because it does not work. Again, if you sub it in and check, if you want to do that quick, negative 2, 0. So we have 0 is greater than equal to 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1, so that does work. 0 is bigger than 0, bigger than or equal to 0. So since it's equal to, that one does work. Um, but then this one. We get 0 is less than negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 is not less than 0. Again, if it was equal to, you'd be in business, but it's not. Um, so that's why that is not a solution. So if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. Sorry, that's a little bit of a longer one, but um, uh, most of it is a review from Algebra 1. Um, but again, I'm not saying that makes it easy. I'm just saying that hopefully this is hopefully sparking some memories for you guys rather than teaching you from a clean slate. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.